Hello everyone. Throughout the end of my junior year, it was suggested for me to begin thinking about what I would like to create while taking the AP Studio class. I went about it by talking to my friends, whom were enrolled in the class at that time. They all told me I would be working harder on my art than ever before, and explained that in order to succeed, I would need to create a specific body of work. A body of work that not only looks good, but shows how my art is evolving by taking that class. After gathering my creative thoughts, I had spoken to Miss Dooley regarding how I shall approach the formation of an original idea. The initial intent revolved around digitally painting realistic faces and learning how to pull off believable work. An undeniable reproduction of humanity with pixels. For the last few weeks of the year, I worked through my lunch with Miss Dooley while she explained the fundamentals of the face and what colors make up skin tones. I expanded my understanding on what I was being shown, yet for some reason I didn't find any way to apply it to my standing work. Everything that was created that summer was my attempt at growing in understanding how to tackle the process of creating a photorealistic face. The fruits of that summer never ended up anywhere near the quality I wished it would, but it led me to a realization. I began to better understand that I still had more to learn about the body's anatomy a turning point which planted a seed for what my work has evolved into. Once August came to an end, the entirety of my concept changed into making my characters in my artwork more believably fluid, as if they move by themselves across my canvas. I attempted to show movement in bodies by viewing them in the process of fighting, and in each image I wanted to create something completely different, from the poses, to the characters, to the background. My aim was to capture a frame of my creations, as if I were to press pause on an action movie. By doing so, I could capture the detailed emotion of every pose. The flexed arms, the bulging veins, and the squinched eyes. In all of my previous works prior to this class, I've noticed a reoccurring issue. My initial perception of the characters were too stiff, which led to my course of action that involves sketching characters in new ways and places allowing me to view my characters through a new set of eyes. As school started, I began work on my first piece for my concentration. I found myself picking apart the techniques of my favorite artists to see how they brought their ideas to life. The way they used lines, details, and color refined their individual styles. Artists who influenced me consist of Sapin Sajic, Jim Lee, Corin Kaiser Stone, Patrick Brown, and Yvonne Kinnett. Such influences inspired me to incorporate their best artistic traits into my own style. For example, Sapin Sage's attention to detail while maintaining both the comic style and realism with each piece, and Jim Lee's incredible usage of lines to create characters, along with having an immense amount of depth producing values. Increasing the level of depth and value in my image was my first step at bettering my art. The sketch for my first piece, Sewer, began as I put graphite to paper, and without an exact vision, a face mirroring a fish came to life during class. As my creation emerged, I noticed that it was exactly what I needed to start my concentration with. Not only did I evolve my artistic technique, but I changed my role from being the narrator to a character, by having the creature's challenger be the sightline for the viewer. I then chose to take the concept into the digital realm through my tablet. Sewer consisted of a previously unused perspective, realistic shimmers of light, and a spectrum of colors that work with the high contrast and value. However, my lack of experience with creating backgrounds led me to a somewhat bland and detailless setting. As I put the last and final components into Sewer at home, I was working vigorously to start my second piece for the first marking period in class. After dealing with the problems of the first piece, I knew I needed to put more thought into the construction of the new concept. Thinking forward to the end product helped depth evolve into a totally different work. This work was more about the locations of each aspect in order to complete the entire panel as I envisioned it. When I was still in the process of resketching the image, the subtle adjustments brought the piece to life. 
After completing multiple sketches during class, I felt it was time to take it to its final stage. As it went from page to file, I knew that everything I was aiming for as far as increasing my skill and technique was coming to fruition. Now looking at all of my pieces together, I see depth as my greatest disappointment in all of my concentration. And yet, I still learned from it and felt comfortable when it was finished. I know that even if I were to take that piece and single it out from my others, it would still be as thought-provoking and as eye-catching as the rest. Like all my pieces, I believe they all work off each other, showing my evolution through the year. But separate, they're still as strong. After the marking period ended, the realization that the time it took to complete two pieces would be the same time given to conceptualize, design, and create four more entirely different works of art, I knew I had to take a leap. And I did exactly that. Even before our class took a break to admire a week-long study on the band Rush, I was rushing to start my next image. I decided to take a different approach by asking Dalton and Demetra to pose for me as I create the mental groundwork to begin my next illustration. Reference photos were taken from different angles to ensure that the chosen perspective would be exactly replicated. For this drawing, I didn't feel the need to sketch a concept on paper or in class. Instead, I went straight to the digital reconstruction of my vision. This piece really hit a turning point in terms of detail for me. I used my normal program, Paint Tool Psy, to create the outlines of the characters and fill in the base colors. But for the first time in my concentration, I used Photoshop to add specific cracks in broken glass and dirt and scuffing on the costumes. I felt this added a different layer to my art. Working at home on window building really helped me as I could sketch my next work breach during school. I felt obligated to create something based off of the rough idea I put out Ninja jumping down on a guard from a roof. Although this would be interesting, it was too bland. I decided on having a weapon be the focal point, almost to where the camera was attached to it, and then I built the rest from that. A Kukutetsu Shogi, in my mind, was the best weapon to use as it is a knife that's whipped around on a rope, so it's flying through the air at all times. We've been told to make each piece better than the last. I knew I had to create something that would enthrall the viewer to look at each piece for a certain aspect that was lacking in any of my others. I was also hesitant to make the angle of the drawing on such a tilt, thinking it would be seen as incorrect, like if someone were to perceive the building to be falling, which it wasn't. The background was difficult to conceptualize. I had many ideas for what I wanted, but since the characters would be in a dojo, stories off the ground, it was a visionary complication. Especially because I wanted to incorporate the beautiful Asian architecture. Over 12 hours went primarily into the conceptual creation of the background, and another 20 just to get the perspective correct and complete the outline for only the buildings. I couldn't be happier with how it turned out, and it's one of my favorite things I've ever created. All of my work at that time represented fighting in the physical sense. I wanted to think outside the proverbial box. Splash, for me, expressed that even though my concentration was narrowed down to its simplest components, it still could be shown in so many ways. You just have to look for them. I think that's what I found so interesting about working within the limits of a concentration. You have to base everything you do upon one focus in your art, and yet there's so much you can do in those bounds. The conflict that I chose to convey with Splash was in the vein of one fighting for survival. Instantly the idea came to me. I wanted something territorial threatening someone's existence, and them attempting to defend their life. The best part is, it's one of the ways you can look at it. You can see it from the perspective of the man, or you can see it from the sharks. Either the shark could be attacking the individual, or he's been hunting the shark. It depends solely on the spectator's judgment. I also aspired to create emotion through the background and color and have it as such a vibrantly peaceful clash just like the man and the fish. When our class took a day to have a discussion on the use of selfies and why we believe them to be appropriate at the National September 11th Memorial Museum, an idea sparked. After being at a loss of creativity for my last illustration of the second marking period, I asked Dalton and Demetri to pose once again for me. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to show exactly, but I knew I wanted it to be through the perspective of a selfie. To have the girl as the focal point, showing off her immense concealed strength, was something I liked showing, because of how Demetra had so much fun knowing it was going to look like she was kicking some serious ass. 
I try to show that in the piece with the smile on the character's face and having her in the control of the outcome of whether or not the fight were to end in mere seconds or if it were to continue by taking him out of the way of the subway car. With any periods, I didn't have any exact concise plan on what I wanted or how I wanted it to look. For the third, I really wanted to put a lot of effort into the reason why they were fighting and who each one was. Another obstacle I had to overcome was my time. I realized that I wanted a piece that had an abundance of characters. At this point, I'm going to talk while showing a time lapse of the creation of my biggest work and talk over it so you can see how I do what I do. Just in the concept stages, I ended up with an entire backstory towards each character and why they look the way they do and the reason for them all being in one place fighting. At that moment, I was aware that I had to scrap the other ideas I had for that marking period to create one massive piece that took longer to make than all of the other previous ones put together. I was expecting to make around 14 pieces by the end of this year. Although I haven't reached that number, I know I succeeded in ways that I think we all have. Restraint had me in its grips from start to finish at around 200 hours. This was an intense learning experience for me which is exactly what I was hoping for when taking this class. I originally was going to create restraint in the same means as I did my previous works. As expected, I had to rethink the way for me to produce it, as Paint Tool Sai couldn't handle the size I was looking for. Even after buying a full set of new RAM for my system, it still was too much of a reach. I ended up creating it through a program called Clip Studio Paint, which at that time I had never used before, so it was definitely more difficult learning an entire new program. Even using the new program, I couldn't make the work as big as I hoped. It was working with the max limits of 40 inches by 30 inches, and a DPI of 1,200. The name Restraint came to me as I set the stage for the work story, where the main protagonist at the top is controlling everyone's mind in order for them to kill each other and have her fight the most worthy combatant. This was her goal throughout the entire piece. As I began working through the creation of Restraint, I hit many barriers. This program crashed as I was overworking it and it lost hours of progress here and there, which was frustrating. I got to a point later on toward the end where whenever I were to add just one line to it, it would take about five minutes to process, which is why I only have a recording of the first few steps of the illustration, although I wanted to document the whole thing. This leads up to my last and final piece, it isn't complete as of now, but from what I have so far, I think it's going to be one of my favorites. It's called Plight, which means a dangerous, difficult, or otherwise unfortunate situation. I think it defines it pretty well. The initial photo was taken during my vacation, where our cruise director, Donkey, and his boss, Sebastian, came up to me in the club as I was sketching something random. They had already met me in the previous nights, and when they looked through my phone at my work from this class, they flipped out and told me to make them into one of my pieces. Coming to the end of this class, and this amazing year, I think I've worked to an extent that I could never have expected, in school and on my own time. I've created so many pieces that I am immensely happy with, some of my greatest successes like Splash and Breach, and my failures, Depth and Selfie. I've grown as an artist and an individual. In closing, over the last four years, the culmination of nine art classes, seven sketchbooks, and the acquisition of a Wacom Cintiq helped my abilities and confidence as I challenged myself to go above and beyond the requirements of my work. Without the assistance, guidance, and occasional mental kick in the ass, I don't believe that my art would have turned out the same. This year, different than prior years, I was presented with a new wrinkle known as my concentration. I worked harder and more focused than ever before, and I can only judge for myself that my concentration has come into fruition. Thank you.